The little boy giggled as he ran his small, soft hands down the old man's furrowed forehead, over his graying eyebrows, eyelids, and eyelashes, and then settled the blindfold just above his nose and ears before running off into the sunlit cemetery to hide. Count to twenty, Grandpa, the boy called out. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, said the old man loudly in no hurry, patient as a dusty cabinet clock in a dining room corner. The sound of laughter receded. Lyle Hovde continued slowly counting. Pressed against his brow and eyelids, Lyle's red faded cotton handkerchief smelled of his worn Wrangler blue jeans. Diesel, gasoline, sawdust, the golden butterscotch candy he favored, and the metallic tang of loose pocket change. Before six, he heard the boys breathing, his little footsteps growing fainter, the occasional crunch of a pine cone or fallen white pine branch under a sneaker, the squeak of long vernal grass and thick shadow, and giggling. By twelve, there was just the sound of a crow caw caw cawing in the crown of a pine. At seventeen, he felt his heartbeat slowing. The April sunlight warming his face felt good, his old barn jacket a comfort like a tucked in bed blanket. There was the desire to simply nod off, fall into the soft black sea of sleep. His counting slowed nevertheless, and at twenty, he pushed the blindfold up, opened his eyes, and the world was still there in a thousand different shades of fragile budding green and gently faded browns and yellows. There was no traffic on Cemetery Road, not a single car, no tractors tilling. In the sky, two sandhill cranes descended toward a far-off pond. His back was against his son Peter's headstone. He stood slowly, heard his knees pop in protest. He steadied himself against the granite slab. Ready or not, he hollered, here I come.